Hello, this is Zahil Alam. Welcome you all on Frankly Speaking. My guest today is Mr. Rafael Granha. He's an international expert on electricity uh, and work, have been working for long years in this sector. Mr. Granha is an engineer and has worked all over the world as an electricity expert. He's here in Bangladesh as a resource person of two training courses on smart grid and best practices uh, in EMS and IT communication. These training courses are implemented by Bangladesh Japan Training Institute, and which is financed by Power Grid Company of Bangladesh Limited. Uh, we welcome Mr. Rafael Granha on Frankly Speaking. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, I think uh, this is your second visit in Bangladesh. It is my second visit in Bangladesh. I was here 10 years ago mm -hmm. on another workshop for efficiencies in the generation sector. And it was very fruitful. And actually, like we were discussing earlier, uh -huh. I was very amazed at how much DACA has changed over the last 10 years. So much construction, so much expansion. The city is vibrant. It's, it's great to see. So you are looking at a strength, strong Bangladesh. I think I'm looking at a very strong Bangladesh. It's, it's very enlightening. Uh, it's, it's a great environment. So, so uh, um, in particularly, when, which training program you are currently... I, I just mentioned about the... Uh, smart greed and best practices. What does it mean? What, uh, why it is so critical right now for uh, the people in Bangladesh? I think it's really important for everyone in the world. Our world is becoming electrified at an incredible rate. Uh, we're digitizing everything that we do. Industries and industrial customers and entities are rising up everywhere. Mm -hmm. Doc is a perfect example of the changes that are being instituted on a daily basis. You look around and you see cranes and construction mm -hmm. and expansion, which means that your electrical infrastructure is growing, and it's growing at a very alarming rate. So the smarter that we make the infrastructure, the easier it is for our operators and our companies, specifically the power grid of, of Bangladesh, to be able to con operate this infrastructure in a cost-efficient manner. So you mentioned that the infrastructure grow, is growing in an alarming rate. and Which is great. It's great for the economy. Uh, but why did, you, why did you term is an alarming rate? 50% over the last five years. That is an incredible growth spurt from any, any country in the world. So that tells you how much emphasis and how great Bangladesh is growing. It's, it's actually a, a good indicator of the health of the company, of the country. But in terms of our efficiency, do you think we are ready to deal with this uh, trend of growth in the electricity sector? In my opinion, uh, both uh, the P PGB, PGB, PGCB, I'm, PGCB yeah. I'm sorry, is they're doing the right things. They're yeah. basically, number one, they're training their resources. They're educating them on industry best practices, which is mm -hmm. very important. They're doing the, the required investments in their systems to be able to control mm -hmm. at a much better rate the infrastructure growth. So between these two initiatives, they'll be able to mitigate or meet all of these uh, requirements that are being imposed on them because of the health of this country. How you look at the transmission of electricity in Bangladesh? I, I believe that the transmission of, of of the present infrastructure is strong. Uh, th because of the load growth, you need to have more investment. That is a given. Mm -hmm. But if it's, if it's forecasted correctly and projects come in mm -hmm. on time, there it should be a very seamless operation. Yeah, we all are aware that the power generation, electricity generation in Bangladesh is increasingly, is significantly, remarkably growing uh, in the recent years. Uh, but the, in terms of performance of PGCB, uh, uh, the organizations that you're working mm -hmm. with right now, uh, which is, I mean, uh, how they are functioning in Bangladesh. What is their uh, strength and uh, how efficiently they are doing their job? I believe the strength is that they're recognizing that the infrastructure is changing. Mm -hmm. They are putting, they're putting, they're doing the required type of of workshops, of education, of their resources. Uh, having the resources understand what the changes are and why the changes are happening and how they can mitigate the mm -hmm. changes in load and in capacity. That's a very important part, the investment in your resource. Mm -hmm. Number two, 
they're recognizing that they have to invest into the required systems, required infrastructure to meet the load demands that are being posed on them through this incredible load spurt that they're going through. So the comp as a company, they have all of the attributes to, to make this a very successful uh, path. Um, I believe that with, you know, it's proof, the proof is in the pudding is that they're actually doing these workshops mm -hmm. with entities that, are, that understand that promoting and developing are the, are the ways to be able to mitigate any of the exposures that a, a tremendous load growth would, would incur. I think you have observed the situation in Bangladesh and you have already met some of the people mm -hmm. related to this field. Uh, in your view, uh, if we, and we are definitely curious to know your view, uh, what are the emerging challenges in transmission of electricity in Bangladesh? The challenges are, are, are true throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned earlier, I, I think this world is, it's become a lot smaller. The number one challenge I think that anybody has in any part of the world, Bangladesh, the United States, Asia, anywhere, mm -hmm. is that customer expectations are increasing. Yes, yeah. With the advent of communication, the internet, people are educating themselves more. Yeah. Their expectations are that if this country or this entity has power that is reliable, why can't I? And if we're growing and we're industrializing ourselves, why would I have less reliable power than you? So from a customer expectation perspective, mm -hmm. it's forcing the utilities to better themselves. Okay. So it's an organic type of, of impetus. Increasing their performance. Exactly. That's a big challenge right That's now. a big challenge. Also, so sorry. basically it's the expectation that's driving a lot of these um, initiatives talking about the potential and some of the challenges, emerging challenges in electricity, uh, generation, transmission, and, uh, and human resources management. Uh, what is the impression about the overall human resources in Bangladesh? It's very basic things. Are they capable enough? Are they efficient enough? Are they uh, inter of international standard to deal with the emerging situation or the challenges uh, looming large in the days to come? Well, first off, I'm very impressed with the folks that, we're, that I'm working with, my, the colleagues that I'm working with. Uh, they show a very big appetite for knowledge, learning, what other folks are doing, what they can do, and, they, and even, even in the workshops that we're having, the discussions that we're having with, from a perspective of what someone, else is, what someone else does versus what they do, and what they can do to make it better are very, very fruitful. So number one, there, there is an impetus to learn, and there's an impetus to get better. You can't ask more of any resource body than that. I mean, from a perspective of where they want to be and where they want to get to, there's just a wonderful knowledge base that is, is ready to sprout. So I do believe that from a perspective of the company and the workshops that are going, it's going to be very fruitful for the existing resources mm -hmm. to do the, the step change and the transformation to move forward in, in the requirements that are going to be needed by the company and the operational side to be able to meet these uh, demands. How they can uh, increase or intensify their level of understanding and knowledge? Uh, I mean, forging partnership or having partnership with other countries. Is there any room for that? I think there's always room for, for partnerships. Partnerships are something that, that, that ga they gain you a lot of uh, ex experience very quickly. Because, you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're able to ascertain things that someone else may be doing, and then you're able to understand what works and what doesn't work in your country. You cannot just take every, you can't parallel anything from anybody else because we're all different. Mm -hmm. Our cultures are different. Our business practices are different. Mm -hmm. Our systems are different. Our infrastructure is different. But there are the not common denominators that we can take that can help us in the transformation process. What may work in one country may not work in another, mm -hmm. but that's the part of being who we are as individuals. And and having our own cultures and our own abilities of do business. So the underlying, the underlying theme here is that the resource body that you have here in this country has the appetite to get better. And they understand that they have to. They understand the challenges that they have in front of them. Mm -hmm. And they're more than willing to tackle those challenges in a very productive manner. 
as an expert in the international um, in the electricity sector, do you think that Bangladesh, uh, as a developing country, as a country of 160 million people, I mean, they are putting up enough or emphasizing enough on research, training, workshop? Is that adequate? For I. That's a very hard question. To meet the challenges. Yeah, the, the, it's a very hard question to answer in the sense of my experience is very finite from a perspective of a very small sector. I know that uh, the Bangladesh Japanese te uh, Technical training Institute. Training Institute does a lot of training in vast areas of the, of the industries. They, mm -hmm. they do banking, they do financial, they do educational, they do utility. So it's a swath of a lot of experience that they're putting out for the country to be able to better from a country perspective better themselves the resource component can be trained the you can tell that the people want to learn they want to better themselves that's the number one piece and, and number two your expansion you wouldn't be expanding at these rates if there wasn't if, if the opportunity wasn't there mm -hmm. so from my perspective take looking at it from the outside view and looking at it from a 50,000 foot level it's very encouraging what you see in this country uh, ten years ago, I saw the same thing when we did the, the, the you know the efficiency uh, project for the generation side. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, but now a lot of things have come into into play, and now you're seeing this growth, which is incredible. It's it's wonderful to see. Is that necessity is the mother of invention or innovation? Yes, that and that. But that, that leads us to that's to meeting that's, this requirement. Exactly, I, I do believe that this is a, a wonderful time to be in Bangladesh. It's, it's a transformational period. You're, you're seeing the growth. You're seeing people vibrant. There's work everywhere. What country wouldn't want to have the ability to be able to work and have their resources working at the levels that they're working now? Do you believe the Bangladesh can hold this trend, the, 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 the pace of the uh, movement moving forward? I don't think they have a choice. I think that they, the, 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 they're going to have to continue. Uh, this growth would not be able to be maintained if not everybody is on board with this, this fast moving train. And I do believe that from everything that I've, from all the folks that I have spoken to, the, the, the people at all the different companies, everybody realizes that this is the right time, the right place to be able to go from where they were to where they want to be. And that's a very exciting time. And in, in my eyes, it's a very exciting time for this, for this country. But, uh, we are talking about the performance, how to intensify, how to increase their performance. But as an expert, what suggestions you would like to put forward for Bangladesh as a whole uh, when we are having so much strength in electricity sector and also having so much challenges to deal with the situation? What suggestions you are putting forward as well, an expert? The, fir the first thing from a, from a utility perspective, the investments need to, need to continue. Uh, the investments in systems to be able to make the jobs more efficient. Um, there's going to be transformational approaches to some of the work that's being done so that you're able to control and operate to the levels that you're going to need to be. Uh, when you're growing at this pace, your systems, your architectures, your infrastructure has to keep up. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it very hard if it doesn't on the resource side. So all, all aspects of the investment from resource to infrastructure to organizational, need to stay on par to be able to maintain this load growth. Uh, as this is a very booming uh, sector right now in Bangladesh to meeting the requirements of the uh, I mean, development or the growth, uh, how do you see the uh, potential or the prospect of foreign investment in electricity sector more in Bangladesh? As countries industrialize, there's always the opportunity for uh, external investment. Mm -hmm. It just has to be the correct external investment. Mm -hmm. But as, as this country continues to electrify itself, industrialize itself, uh, have very reliable energy, then you, can, then you can expect that there'll be more foreign investments. Because the first thing they're going to look at is, how reliable is my system? Do I have a reliable energy sector? Do I have a reliable communication sector? Because mm -hmm. those are the two things that you need to be able to, for business to prosper, especially from an industrialized perspective. Mm -hmm. So as long as those two sectors are, are strong and, of course, you have the resource component that ties into it, mm -hmm. then investments are going to come. 
What are the other areas? What are the other ways where we can we can we can focus to produce more electricity in Bangladesh to meet the challenge, apart from our traditional way to producing electricity? There's a there's an incredible opportunity worldwide for renewable energy. Mm, yeah. uh, the renewable en energy sector has, from a price point perspective, has come down. Now, it's not to where it was 10 years ago that the price points were very high. Now you can install wind, wind farms, you can install solar farms. Yeah. Uh, the initial investment is really the key because the operational side is very small compared to a traditional gas-fired unit or, mm. or other coal-fired or, or, coal or oil-fired. Or nuclear. Energy? Nuclear is very expensive. Nuclear, the, the initial investment in nuclear, uh, I think is really... And we're also trying that. Yes, I know. You, you're, you're, you're installing a plant in 2023, I believe. Exactly. Uh, 12, 2400 megawatts. Is I the right thing is. we're doing, in your view? I think it is. I mean, that, that's, that's an investment that's saying we're going to be around for a long time. Once you're willing to invest that amount of money or investment capital into a project, that's telling your citizens, that's telling the world that you are going to be around for a long time, that you want to be a, a player within the industrialized world. I think that's a very good signal to send. As you are working uh, right now, you are visiting Bangladesh in an invitation of PGCB. How a great... Power Grid Company Bangladesh. Uh, I mean... What should they fo on focus on as a priority basis to improve their performance? Any suggestions for that? My, my suggestion would be to continue the investments that they need in, in the system architecture. Um, the systems really need to main, the systems are key to be able to control the power efficiently. So the more, the, the more investments in that area, specifically in the ener energy market, energy management system area, and in the data warehousing to be able to do more analysis-based uh, analysis, that's where they, they need to concentrate. And I do believe they are because of the investment types of numbers that I'm seeing and that have been given to me. Uh, as you are from the United States of America, uh, which part of the United States of America? I'm from uh, South Florida, Flo Miami, Florida. Okay. And uh, in how many countries you have been working um, for training and other? Uh, countless. I In this part of the region, I've been to... Pakistan, I've been to India, um, here once before. Okay. Uh, in Europe, it was Turkey. Uh, in Africa, it was Nigeria. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a few. And then in, down in the Caribbean, uh, the Dominican Republic. Any, any, and any, any comparative view uh, on the pace of development, growth in, in terms of infrastructure or electricity? You know, I, 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 I liken this a lot to India. India was in India maybe 15 years ago was in a similar situation and then they privatized a lot of their resources their companies mm. and forced them to become more efficient and then you saw the investments come mm -hmm. in on on systems on meters on mm -hmm. customer service platforms and I'm seeing the same thing now in Bangladesh mm -hmm. that same parallel where the fervor is to to get better and they're looking mm -hmm. at all of these different platforms to become more efficient in their in their ability to manage uh, the sector. So that's really, that's the one that I would compare it to. And actually, it's a good comparison because India has been very, very successful over the last mm. 15 years in, in the way that they do business in the world. I mean, imparting new knowledge, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, for the uh, people, for uh, developing human resources. Some organizations are working, you also mentioned that Japan Bangladesh mm -hmm. Training Institute, one of them. Uh, I mean, what the policymakers can do to promote, to, to, to involve more organizations so that they can provide this sort of trainings and, 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 and see more people grow in a very efficient manner to deal with the situation they're facing. Well, I believe the model that, um, that Bangladesh uh, Japan Technical Institute has is a very strong model. It's, it's a public service-oriented entity. Uh, they understand the requirements that are needed from a resource training perspective, not just in one sector, but in, in broad sectors. So that business model that they bring to the table could be replicated by, the, you know, by, e, you know, by, by support from the government or even from private sectors. But they're doing a very, very good job, at least within the structure that they have, to be able to parlay 
information back to the industries that are helping them to become much more efficient. Where do you want to see Bangladesh after 10 years? I, want, I would like to see I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what I would say, but I know that I would want to see it in 10 years. I think it's going to be a much more vibrant place than what it is now. Uh, and now it's incredible. You, you have seen a lot of strong and strength of Bangladesh by this time, but w any weaknesses you observed here in Bangladesh? Any bottlenecks, any hurdles, barriers, which can stand against you the know, prospect? I'm a, very, I'm a very positive person. Okay. I, I always look at the, the glass half full. Okay. Um, I worry about the real estate from a perspective of the amount of real estate that's left. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very dense. Um, so those are changes that you'll have to address eventually from an infrastructure perspective. And I think everybody knows that. But outside of that, I think the people are very resilient. Okay. And it's a very strong culture. And it's a very good culture mm -hmm. for, you know, for progress and improvement. So like I said, I would love to see how, this, how DACA is in, in, in 10 years. Hopefully it doesn't take me 10 years to come back. You want to see a conducive Bangladesh, prosperous Bangladesh, healthy I think, Bangladesh. I think that would be wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much, Rafael. Thank you very much. Speaking. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Dear viewers, that's all my conversation with Rafael Granha, international expert on electricity business. He is from the United States of America. Dear viewers, uh, to know more updates and videos, visit our website, www.ntvd.com. Uh, and besides, you can also visit our YouTube and verified Facebook page for updates over NTV's all popular programs and news. Thank you very much for watching this show. Frankly speaking, wish you all the best. Thank you.